found out I had to introduce today's commencement speaker, Alan Koikoi. He hasn't gotten into enough trouble for him to be on my radar as dean. <laughs> I haven't had the pleasure to teach or coach Alan during his time at the upper school either. So what, what to say? Like any good teacher in a pinch, I decided to rely on someone else's lesson plans and pretend they were my own. So I went to those who did know him. Clearly he is respected by his peers. After all, they are the ones who chose him to speak. Comments from his teachers were uniformly complimentary. To quote his college counselor and advisor, Bonnie Adachi, while Alan will never be the loudest in the room, he will invariably be the one whom others look to for leadership. There's a quiet confidence around Alan. He knows who he is and who he can be. And he isn't afraid of the hard work necessary to get there. As his advisor and college counselor, I watched him go from, I want to play D1 football to, I will play D1 football sheer grit and determination. He spent hours in the weight room and on the field, building himself into a player who was recruited by over 25 schools, including academies. Yet, as you listen to him speak, it is clear that he remains grounded, grateful, and genuine. Clearly, I have missed out on a pleasure, but it is my pleasure now to introduce the class of 2015 commencement speaker, Alan Koikoi. Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Before I begin, I would like to ask the class of 2015 to stand, please. Please give a round of applause to your parents for all their sacrifices and hard work that they made for us to be here today. Please remain standing and give a round of applause to the teachers and staff for always being there, putting up with us, and helping us grow as individuals. And lastly, but definitely not least, please give a round of applause to the people who work behind the scenes, maintenance. They put in so much hard work for our campus to be beautiful and orderly and rarely get the recognition they deserve. And now we see you. The graduation day is finally here. All of our hard work has paid off, and we get to enjoy the fruits of our labor. All the difficult times of struggle and discomfort have come to a close, at least for this chapter of our lives, and we can look back and think, that wasn't so bad. The long nights at your desk studying weren't so bad. Those hot summer practices or cold, brutal winter ones weren't so bad. And those long hours perfecting whatever craft that is your passion weren't so bad. These memories of struggle may be coming back to mind, but I ask that you not dwell on these not so good memories. I ask that you channel the emotions that are brought about from those thoughts and use them to fuel the emotions of this celebration today. Today is the day you can look back on the memories and say, I made it through. I know it wasn't easy, but I made it through. Today is the day we are celebrated. So take a moment and celebrate. Celebrate your accomplishments, celebrate your milestones, celebrate your triumphs, and wear your accolades on your sleeves. Celebrate with your loved ones and whoever else is special to you because I guarantee there's a good chance you are where you are today because of them, because of your family. Your family is your gravity. They can lift you up and they can keep you grounded. Your family is the mechanic that keeps you in tune. When you're crying or feeling sad, they fix your leaky pipes. When you're feeling down, they give you a tune up and get you back up on the road. And when you're going too fast, they slow you down and keep you at the right pace. But they're way more than that. Your family is you and you are your family. So the way I see it, this is just not our graduation. It's theirs too. These diplomas aren't just yours. They're your family's as well. Because they're way more than just a piece of paper rolled up and tied in a ribbon. It's a symbol of perseverance. Not just yours, but your family's perseverance. So I ask that when you walk across this stage and accept your diploma, remember that this accomplishment is much bigger than you. And that it isn't just your ceremony. It's your family's. As I stand up on this stage, I reflect on the difficult times my family and I have gone through, but I realize they were placed in my life for a reason. And because of that, I can now see the beauty in those situations. 
The beauty of the fact that we don't always have it easy, but somehow we always get through. The beauty of that no matter what material thing we are lacking, the one thing we never lacked was each other. The beauty of the struggle is something that not many people can understand. The beauty in that no matter how far you get knocked down, there's still strength in your knees to stand. The beauty in that you can look back and say I came a really long way, but because you know there's more to come, you get down on your knees to pray. When you get knocked down and you think you're down for the count, you look around and you see your family. In your time of need, they surround. I can't explain the joy it brings for a man to see his family proud. I now realize it's truly a blessing to see your dreams alive before you see them from a cloud. I now see that the only reason I made this made it this far was my family. Seeing my support group and foundation, people keep telling me how blessed I am, but seeing how many people don't have that necessity, sometimes I just feel lucky. I just feel like one of the lucky ones. I feel lucky that I made it to my graduation day because I've seen so many people with the same foundations as me come up short. Sometimes I wonder how I got this far. I wonder how I'm so lucky to live the life I do today. I feel lucky to have been born the son of two immigrants. Work ethic was something I saw every day. It was impossible not to copy. I feel lucky that I made it to this stage because statistically and logistically it just wasn't supposed to happen. How did I make it this far? It could have only been my luck or chance. I remember wanting to give in. Failure tapped me on the shoulder and asked for a dance. I escaped a school system that told me I couldn't make it. You know, the type of school system that just gives knowledge to the kids and doesn't think twice how they distribute it. My mama asked me how school was one day. I told her I hated it. The principal hates me and my teacher said we're gonna amount to nothing. I asked her, how could you say that? I told her, mom, I wanna be something. Fast forward many sacrifices later, I ended up at this place, St. Paul's School, also known as my saving grace. I never quite understood how I got here. My rap sheet from elementary school had to strike schools with fear. Rewind the clock back 10 or so years and take a glance at my life. You'll see painted a situation that doesn't seem to the present of light. How I'm so lucky is a question that lingers in my mind at night. Maybe, just maybe, I rolled the dice just right. But then suddenly I remember that I'm not lucky, and I'm reminded that I am blessed. My life is, has a purpose, and my job is to fulfill that purpose. And knowing that and keeping it in the back of my head gives me peace of mind. I say this to remind all of you that all of us have a purpose, and we've been given the opportunities we've been given for a reason not just by luck or chance. They did not just fall into our laps. They were placed there. We would be doing ourselves and our loved ones a huge disservice if we did not use them to further ourselves as best as we can. Before I end, I have to give a thank you to the class of 2015. Thank you for simply being who you are. Who we are as individuals is what helped shape this class and made it such a unique group. I wish you good luck in your futures and whatever you do, I ask that you never change, never use that special quality that makes you who you are, but most importantly, I ask that you never stop following your dreams. Thank you.